Hey there! I thought that uh, what I would do today is just uh, talk in this video, so I thought that I would make my life easier by not having a title card or sounds or whatever. But then I realized that people would be like, Ew, where's the startup sound and where's the thing with... Bananas. What we would do today, what I thought we would do today, is this. I thought we would talk about Mibmeister. So this is a video where I talk. There is not going to be any products, there's not going to be any reviews, there's not going to be any of that. I just want to talk about this because I get a lot of questions about this. So, the topic is the Nibmeister. And uh, there's a couple of things I would like to cover. One thing is, and I think that's where we should start, what's a Nibmeister? Then I would like to move on to who some Nibmeisters are that I have done business with. And then we can talk a little bit about why. Why you would want to go to a Nibmeister, etc. Let's start at the beginning though. What What is a Nibmeister? If you are new to the fountain pen hobby, you may not be very familiar with this. And even if you are more experienced in this, you may never have used the services of a Nibmeister. You may not be entirely sure what a Nibmeister is. So, a Nibmeister is a person who is specialized in the adjustment and grinding of nibs. Adjusting a nib we typically call tuning. Now, when you think about a nib, a nib has typically two tines, sometimes three specific music nibs, but two tines, and the nib is set on a feed. If it is not that, then it's not a fountain pen. Now, unfortunately, a lot of things can go wrong with the setting of that nib. For example, the nib may be misaligned to the feed, and that can hamper ink flow. Or the tines may be misaligned. Instead of them being nice and tight and straight like this, one may be above the other, and then the inside of one tine scratches across the paper more, and the nib has a lot of feedback. Uh, sometimes the tines are too tight together, or they are splayed out in a way from the away from the uh, breather hole, and that is an issue because that hampers ink flow as well. In other words, all kinds of things can be wrong with the nib, and a nibmeister can fix those problems because a nibmeister is specialized in doing those things. Another thing that nibmeisters typically do is grinding nibs. So, for example, imagine that you bought a pen. The only version of that pen that was available had a broad nib, and you really like fine nibs, and you cannot find a fine nib that fits that pen anywhere else. You can sign, so you can send that pen to a nibmeister, and the nibmeister will grind down your broad nib to a medium or a fine or an extra fine or whatever. The other way around is a little difficult, right? Going from a fine nib to a broad nib, that would require nib retipping. And one nib retipper that comes to my mind is Greg Minuskin in somewhere in California. He does nib retipping. So he was trained in, trains a watchmaker, he's very precise, and he can take off the, the tipping material of the nib and he can weld new tipping material on. Not every nib master can do that. That's a somewhat different thing. So, what do I mean by grinding? Well, there is that going down a size, but there is much more. Maybe you have a round nib, you want that to become an italic nib. So instead of having round tipping material, you have straight tipping material, so you get a broad downstroke and a narrow side stroke. Or maybe you want something more exotic, like an architect grind, also known as a Hebrew grind or an Arabic grind. That's basically the opposite of an italic grind. So you get a fine downstroke and you get a broad side stroke. And then there are many other things. Cursive italic nibs, uh, crisp italic nibs, calligraphy nibs, stub nibs. They're all a little different and I don't want to get into all these details because that's that's a different topic and this video is probably already going to be quite long. In other words, specialty grinds and I have a video on specialty grinds, sbrebrown.com for an index to all my videos. Okay, so those things a nibmeister can create. Imagine you like an oblique nib, so tipping material that is not straight but that's kind of lifts it up one way or the other. That's useful if you rotate a pen as you write. Well, not every manufacturer offers oblique nibs at this point. In fact, many don't, so a nibmeister can grind that for you. Okay, I think that, I hope, adequately covers what a nibmeister does. Tuning nibs and grinding nibs. What about who? Who are some nibmeisters? Well, there are many. Okay. Most of the nibmeisters I'm familiar with are in the United States. 
okay but there's also some nip meisters there's at least one that i know of in canada and i I'll, I'll quickly mention a few but this is not an exhaustive list here are people i have done business with or whose work at least i have sampled okay there is michael masayama of mikeitwork.com very nice guy very very skilled now what i should say at this point is there's no such thing as like a master's degree in nib grinding this doesn't exist right so often nib meisters learn through apprenticeship or they learn by doing a lot of self-study probably messing up a lot of nibs but learning as they go right mike masayama has learned from among other people mr nagahara and his son mr nagahara ground very specialized nibs for sailor so there is that he is in la um, there are many others. Richard Binder, famous name, but Richard Binder, as I understand it, has retired. You may be able to find him at certain pen shows, also in the US. Um, he has, I think, trained two people, and I want to say this husband and wife team, from Independence. Okay, I'll put links to these people in the description. Uh, there is Dan Smith, the Nib Smith. Uh, I, I want to say Ohio. Um, there is the nib grinder, Mark Bakas, and actually I have no idea where he is, but somewhere in the US. So I do have an idea, I just don't know which state uh, from the top of my head. So there is that. Oh, I think Georgia actually. No, Georgia. Anyway, Mark Bakas, the nib grinder. Uh, there's Pendleton Brown in the United States. Uh, so there are, I, I may miss some people, I don't want to spend this video just listing names, but these are except for independence, all people whose work I have sampled. And I'm sure that independence does great work too, because they were trained by Richard Binder, who was um, uh, one of the OGs of, of nib meistership. So um, uh, very, uh, very skilled at, at what he, he did, and I guess still does at pen shows. So these are some options for the US. In Canada, I know of Salman Katak uh, of the um, uh, Toronto Pen Company. He's in, uh, in Canada. In the, in the United Kingdom, there was John Soroka, whose work I have sampled and who's very, very good. Um, he doesn't have a website, but you can contact him through the Fountain Pen Network as Oxonian. And finally, I know of Annabelle in the Netherlands, who offers her services through Applebaum. Now, please listen very carefully. I don't know every country in the world. I don't know every city in the world. So please do not post comments along the lines of do you know a nipmeister in tel aviv or do you know a nipmeister on the bahamas no i don't these are the people i do if you want to have a nipmeister in other locations bear in mind these people all accept international work as far as i know if you want someone else you have to google it okay nipmeister and maybe ask at a local pen club or local pen store they may be able to help you out but I don't have all the answers, that's what I have. So that's the who. How do you get your pen there? Well, typically they offer services, Nibmeisters offer services at a pen show, where they set up shop, and you go to them, and you sign in on a list, and when, if it's your turn, it's your turn, you get a phone call or something, and then they and you give them your pen, and you say, here's a pen, please turn this into a, a, a cursive italic, or some nib meisters do very fancy work. For example, they put one nib grind on one side of the nib, and if you turn the pen around, you have a different grind, which of course gets more expensive. Clearly, this is not charity. This is often their income, so you pay them for their services, right? I'll come back to that. But that's it. So it depends on the nib meisters. Some have certain specializations and, you know, special grinds that only they do and no one else does, etc. But that's how you get to them at a pen show. Or many nib meisters also accept mail-in work. I just mailed off a nib to Mike Masayama and I, you contact him, you say, okay, this I think is the issue with the nib. And he says, okay, uh, I, I send it to me. And then you do that and he has a form, you download it, you fill it out, you put that in with the package and then you send the nib to him and then that's it. And then he does his, he works his magic with all his skill and then he messages you and says, I think it's done. What's your address again? And then you give that and then it's sent back to you and done, you know, and then you pay, of course, of course you pay. So that's roughly the process. So if there's no pen shows in your area, you cannot attend a pen show, you can typically send your nibs to a nibmeister. Now, here's a discussion we need to have as to the why. 
because we've now covered what they do and who they are. What about why? Well, there was a time that I believed that if a nib came out of the box, or pen came out of the box, it should write flawlessly. And if that's your stance, then you could raise the question, why have nib masters at all? A pen should write flawlessly out of the box. Well, first of all, if that's your viewpoint, I'm afraid that the hobby of fountain pens might very well be a maybe not constant, but a very consistent source of frustration and disappointment to you because many pens will not write to your liking. Now, at some point I had a discussion about this with my friend Murray from the Calgary Pen Club. He had a different viewpoint that grew, grew on me a lot. He said, no, you can't expect a nib to write perfectly out of the box. You should be able to expect that it writes, right? Because these are not his words, but I mean, otherwise it's defected, right? That it just doesn't work. That's another question I get, what do you do if your nib doesn't work? Well, the very simple answer is then you send it back because you've bought a defected product or more likely you've been sold a defect product. But if that's not an option, then a nibmeister becomes an option. So we'll get to that. Okay. So, so Murray's point was you can't expect a pen to write perfectly because what is perfect to you may not be perfect to me. At least I think I'm summarizing his point properly. But if not, Murray, let me know. And that I actually think is a pretty fair point. Like think about a car. You can buy a car and it drives, but that's what a car does. Like it drives and it accelerates and it does all these things. But with a fountain pen, you may have very specific desires. You may like a wet nib. I may like a dry nib. Actually, I like a wet nib, but you know what I mean. Uh, you may like a super smooth nib and I may like a nib with a little bit of feedback. Unless you purchase a nib from a company that also tunes nibs, Dan Smith is an example, the nibsmith. One person I forgot to mention, John Mottishaw of nibs.com, he tunes nibs when you purchase a pen from him. So he sells pens and he tunes it and he can do things to your liking and then it's sent to you. But let's be fair, a lot of pen shops don't do that, right? So in that case, you don't have the option to say, I would like a bit of feedback and I don't want it too wet. So then maybe it's not entirely fair to expect that that pen will come out of the box writing exactly the way you like it, because maybe it comes out of the box in a way that, in which it writes the way that I like it, but that may not be the way you like it. So in such cases, I think that's a pretty fair argument, and in such cases you could use a Nibmeister services to make the pen write the way you want it to write. Now I'm going to give you... Um, I'll give you three quick examples, just personal illustrations, so you get a bit of a feeling of how I have solicited the services of a nibmeister. It's Mike Masayama in 100% of cases, but that's just because I've had such wonderful experiences with him. So, first experience, 2012, DC Pen Show. I had a Conway Stewart. I didn't buy it there. It had an italic medium nib. It was a great nib. Sorry, it was a great pen, but the nib was not great. It was incredibly skippy. Beautiful nib, square tipping material. I remember that nib was beautifully ground, but it just skipped. It wasn't tuned perfectly. I gave it to Mike Masayama. He worked on it, and the pen was beautiful. Second example, 2017. I had my Visconti Opera Master Tobacco. Beautiful pen. Had an 18 karat, an, an older 18 karat gold nib from Visconti and it was skippy and it railroaded. It was very soft and I don't write with a lot of pressure but it was it was too soft, it was weird. At the show, gave it to Mike and I thought this is gonna be a pretty simple tune-up. I don't need any grinding, just a simple tune-up, it's probably gonna be five minutes. I think he spent something like 15 minutes with that nib. Taking it out, making sure it was aligned properly, everything he does, right? And, 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 and grinding it down a bit and, and, and setting it to the feed and all that stuff. That is now one of my favorite pens to write with because now it's beautiful and it doesn't railroad anymore either. I don't even pretend to understand what he did to it, but that's why he's a nibmeister. These people have one look at your nib and say, ah yes, this, 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 and that is wrong with it. Let me fix that. And they do that, right? Final example, I bought a Danitrio Mikado, Danitrio, a Danitrio, Danitrio, I still don't understand how you pronounce that. I'm going to go with Danny Trio. Danny Trio Mikado from Eric. Love it. 
uh, but the nib was so dry, stub nib, so dry, I couldn't use it. So I explained it, emailed to Mike Masayama, he said, yeah, I can fix it, send it to me. Send it to him, came back, beautiful, wet but not too wet, and smoother than it had ever been. So he also smoothed it out. Fantastic. So these are three examples, hopefully that gives you a bit of a feeling of how I've, I've used that and when I would go to a nibmeister. As to the earlier argument of, but shouldn't a pen write out of the box? Yes, I absolutely feel that a pen should write out of the box. What I'm trying to convey here is, a pen may not write exactly to your specification. And a nibmeister will do that for you, it will set up the pen and the nib in such a way that it will write exactly the way you want it to write. Not too wet, not too dry, or super wet or super dry, uh, smoother or with more feedback, anything you like. If a pen does not write at all, sometimes that's a matter that a nibmeister can fix as well, right? I had also 2012 DC Pen Show, I bought a Twisby Micarta that just wouldn't write. It was so dry it just didn't didn't have any ink flow mike tuned that fixed that and boom it was done right so they can also do that now i say again if if you buy a pen it really does not write the most sensible thing to do is just return it to the person where you bought it but that may not always be an option it could be an ebay purchase you can you may not be able to afford to send the pen halfway across the world there may be also have an issue with the nibmeister but i'm just trying to make the point there may be situations where you simply it's simply not an option to return the pen right? And then a nibmeister can help out as well. Now, a couple of questions that I, I typically get on this topic um, are these. So I think we've now covered it, right? What they do, who they are, why you would want to solicit the services, so to make a nib right to your specifications, or to have a nib ground. I have not really had any nibs ground because when it comes to specific grinds like Curse of Italics and such, I don't hugely care for those. I typically just like the nib with the geometry it has, so a broad to remain a broad, a fine to remain a fine. I don't need anything fancy done to it that grind it. But again, that's personal preference, but they could also do that for you. So one question I receive often is, but can I not do this myself? Well, here's the deal. I um, I shan't go into detail, but I was once told by a fellow reviewer that he accidentally dropped a pen. Someone had lent him a pen, he dropped it. He tried to fix the nib, he couldn't do it himself, and uh, he got a replacement pen for that person who lent him the pen. And then he thought, I may as well get this fixed. So on, at, during a pen show, he took that nib to Mike Masayama. Now bear in mind, this is someone who understands pens because they reviewed pens, they've used a lot of pens, they've tuned nibs. He handed that pen to Mike, and these were his words. I was told this, right, by that reviewer. Mike looked at it and said, Grinding these is not as easy as it seems, is it? So the level of expertise of a nibmeister is such that they see what has happened to that nib. They see what you have done to it, how you have kind of messed it up, right? Are there things you can do to your nibs yourself? Absolutely. And with enough practice and skill, you can do a lot of things to your nibs, right? There are certain things I can do and they typically work out. Making a nib wetter is one of those things. Making a nib smoother is one of those things. I have videos on that. Old videos. I should probably redo at some point. Anyway. However. What I have learned through a lot of trial and error. Is that Mike's words were 100% true. Even tuning a nib is not as easy as it seems. And there are pens that I have. I just don't want to mess with. Often, I'll be honest, it's a matter of cost. If I've spent quite a lot of money on a pen, I really don't want that nib to be messed up. And then I know that I can take it to a professional who knows exactly what they're doing, and they will make that nib right like a dream. And I don't mess anything up. Because bear in mind, something like making a nib wetter, the theory is simple. 
you, inc you increase the, the gap between the two tines a little bit. But if you overdo it, you splay the nib and ink flow is hampered. If you lift up the nib of the feed, ink flow is hampered. If the two tines, like the, the, the gap is open up, the slits open up, but one tine is just a little higher than the other, the nib is going to be scratchy. And to a nib meister, <laughs> they can pretty much solve all those issues blindfolded. But to you, it may not be that easy. I'm not talking about you personally, but I mean in general. If you're not a nib meister, these things may not be so clear, and they may not be so easy. And I like to compare that to think of a car. There are certain things that I can do on a car. If I have to replace my uh, windscreen washer fluid, windshield washer fluid, you know what I mean? I can do that. This is not difficult, right? If I have to smooth a nib, I don't do that. If the, I, I, I mean, sorry, I do that. If there is, the only thing that needs to be done is that nib needs to be a bit smoother, I do that. I take micro mesh, I can do that, I get good results. This is no problem. Aligning nib tines is already a bit harder. Increasing flow in a nib, I may do on a cheaper pen, but not an expensive pen. Man's got to know his limitations. So, the windscreen fluid, this is not a problem. Let's say it again, windshield, you know what I mean. Uh, the front window of your car, whatever. Um, I'm not a car person. So, that fluid is no issue. Could I change the oil in the car? I probably could. I've never done it, but I'm sure I can figure that out. It's not like I can do that. So, I can do that. But I can also go to Canadian Tire and I do it for 35 bucks. And then I know it's done perfectly, I haven't messed anything up, I haven't forgotten to tighten anything, I'm really like, you know, I can now have this, this picture of the car and then oil trailing behind like that. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? There are certain things you can do yourself, but for me, me personally, the reasoning often is the fact that I can do it myself, probably can do it myself, doesn't necessarily mean that I will do it myself. And I know that these people are trained, have developed the skill set to do that, a lot of this stuff, again, with their eyes closed. And I'm now at a stage where sometimes I have a pen that's pretty expensive, and I want to make sure that I don't mess that up. Second question I often get is, is it worth it to take an inexpensive pen, whatever is inexpensive in your mind, you can enter here. For some people that's $5, for some people that's $500, for other people that's $2,000, it doesn't matter. But I'm really talking about inexpensive pens. So let's say, just for the sake of argument, I'm not trying to offend anyone, just listen to me. Let's say a $50 pen. Is it worth it to take that pen to a nibmeister? Bear in mind, the prices of a nibmeister, I would say something like a basic tuning, not grinding, just tuning, making sure the tines are aligned, aligned to the feed, and all that stuff, a bit of smoothing is typically included in that. You typically look at 30 US. 30 US, 40 US, depends a bit on what nibmeister you go to. Now imagine that you have a $50 pen. Is that worth it? Well, the simplest way to answer it, and also the most avoidant way to answer it, is that's up to you. But in my mind, because I'm assuming that you're interested in what I have to say about this, yes it is. Yes it is. Now, you'll understand this is a bit of a sliding scale. If you have bought, if you have bought a thousand dollar pen, and you want it a bit wetter, you want it a bit smoother, you want all that stuff, so it's right up your alley, right exactly, writing exactly the way you want it to write. Well, it's going to be, what I say, a thousand dollar pen plus 40 bucks for the tuning, say. That price of pen, it, it's not a big percentage of the value of that pen. If you've purchased a fifty dollar pen, then I can see how you might think, yeah, wait a minute, uh, fifty bucks, forty dollars for a tuning, sometimes with a flat rate too. Uh, I'm going to basically spend as much on the tuning as I will on the pen. And then I think the question is more interesting, is that worth it? To me the answer remains yes. And the reason for that is, bear in mind what the end goal is. The end goal is to get a pen that is going to write exactly the way you want it to write. 
and the tuning is a one-time procedure unless you do anything to mess it up like you you rip out the nib and you can't align it back to the feed or you uh, you drop it whatever that's um, that's user error right okay we've all been there but it's user error once you have that thing tuned once you have that set up by your nib meister it will write the way you want it to write now it's a little easier at a pen show because typically what happens there is they do their job and then they give it to you and you try and say, no, I want it a bit wetter. And they say, okay, and they do that and they give it back to you. Clearly, if you have to do this through mail, it becomes very costly. But again, I've done my Danny Trio through mail with Mike. It came back out of the box, then it was perfect. So I didn't have that need to send it back to him. But theoretically, that could happen. But I think depending on how you how clearly you can specify what you want, they will know what to do. Okay, so yes, to me that is worth it. Now I can see how someone is going to say, what about a $5 Jin Hao? Yeah, what about it? It's a $5 Jin Hao, right? Are you going to send that out and have $50 worth of work done on it? Why not? If you then end up with a pen that writes perfectly, but and I agree that that might be a bit disproportionate, but there is no reason you should have no scruples to do that. And the reason I bring up this particular issue is that I've had people who came up to me and who asked me, for example, at pen shows, well, I have this pen, but it's a Lamy Safari. It cost me $30. If I take this to a Nibmeister, this little, these are little questions I've had. Is he or she going to be offended? Like, is it, is it worth it? Is, it? is it the done thing to do this? Or would I just be, be laughed at? I really think no netmeister will laugh at you. First of all, to them it's business, right? Look at it from a very simple perspective. They will tune whatever you want as long as you pay. Or grind whatever you want, right? So I don't think that's an issue. The issue is more so, is it worth it to you? Now, I realize that if you spend $5 on a pen, then a $50 tuning is a bit interesting. But on the other hand, again, the end product is you end up with a pen that writes exactly the way you want it to write. Okay. Final thing I wanted to say about this topic is I know people, and I'm not saying that this is something you have to do, but let's be fair. I interact with a lot of people who buy a lot of pens. And very often I hear stuff like, well, I didn't write the way I wanted it to, or, well, nothing writes the way I wanted to. I understand. Here is something to think about. Now, I'm not defending this. I'm not saying this is how it should be. But again, bear in mind the way you want a pen to write may not be what the manufacturer's specifications are. Hence the Nibmeister. Bear this in mind. I know people who... Um, what do you call that? Include the price of a Nibmeister in their pen budgeting. So, for example, when they buy a pen, I'm just making this up as I go, when they buy a pen of $500, they say, actually, it's not $500, it's going to cost me $550. Because I will purchase the pen, it'll be shipped to me. Sometimes they have it shipped directly to a Nibmeister, but before you do that, ask them, right? Because they many of them don't have necessarily businesses they work from their private home so imagine you get other people's stuff sent to you make make it just it's just a polite thing right just ask them first but people sometimes do that they buy a pen and they have it shipped to them sorry have it shipped to the nibmeister or they have it shipped to them and they send it to the nibmeister but they budget for that so they say this is not a 500 dollars pen it's 550 dollars because it's 500 for the pen and 50 dollars for the tuning that i'm going to have done to it and that's just part of the cost i have i'm not saying you should do that i'm also not saying that that's the proper way to do it or anything all i'm saying is that's another way to look at this another way to think about this right maybe that's a way that makes sense to you and maybe not i'm just saying it's just a way to look at things, just a way to think about things, right? Okay, 
I was thinking I'd maybe spend 10 minutes on this topic. I've tried to be as structured as I can, and yet I now see it's a 30-minute video. I do apologize for the length, but I hope that the length, but I do hope that the um, contents are of interest to you. A uh, bit of food for thought. So thank you very much for watching, and um, I hope this was useful. Let me know your thoughts, experiences with Nim Meisters, what you think of the idea that pen should just have basic functionality and tuning is a good idea, or if you think that's a bad idea, etc. Let me know. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye.